Hello, I'm Joshua Finn with J&H Aerospace. Um, I've had a, a number of observations lately of, of individuals who, who are in, unfamiliar with how to retrieve or recover rubber-powered models for outdoor flying. Um, there seems to still be the perception that there's one way to do it, and that way was invented back in the 1940s. So I'm going to hopefully provide a few alternative methods that will help you retrieve uh, smaller, lighter models. So what we're going to start out with is the old way of doing things. Um, and how appropriate, this is an Earl Stahl model uh, designed back in the late 1930s. Uh, this is a scale model, so uh, having a dethermalizer on it is, is still somewhat unusual, although they're becoming more popular nowadays. Uh, so the way this works is we have a, uh, a snuffer tube right here that receives a fuse, and the fuse is English lamp wick, which is cotton uh, fuse that is, uh, that is impregnated with saltpeter, so it, it burns very reliably, it burns very hot and very slowly. Uh, so when the, uh, you stick about uh, an inch and a half of fuse into the snuffer tube, and as it burn, burns down, it cuts through this rubber band, and when it cuts through the rubber band, it releases the tail to pop up at about 45 degrees. That puts the airplane into a deep stall condition, brings the airplane down very quickly out of the thermal. That's the whole point of this, is you want to be able to get your airplane back. Otherwise, it will continue to rise out of sight in the event that it flies into a thermal, which with a well-trimmed model, that's, that's actually very likely. Um, so with proper use of, of these fuses, uh, you get the opportunity to fly on much smaller fields than you otherwise would because you can do what's called short fusing, which is bring the airplane down prematurely, um, and a variety of other options. So we'll put this one back. Now we're going to step into another method. This is also a scale model, one that needs repairs, but the, uh, the point is to, to show you the uh, technique used here. Uh, since we have rigging on the tail surfaces, it's a lot harder to, to dethermalize this airplane by deflecting the tail upward. So in this case, we're going to put a fuse right here, and when that fuse burns through, nothing apparently happens, except for the fact that since the aircraft is supported by the wing, when that restraint is removed, the aircraft falls down like this. We get about a, uh, about a 45 degree deployment, and in this uh, configuration, the airplane will descend almost vertically. So you, get a, you end up getting a slightly faster descent than you would with the traditional methods and that allows uh, you to have a higher chance of recovering a, a small lightweight model because on models this size the getting a, in, a significant increase in your descent rate actually becomes very difficult. That however is still not the most effective method. The most effective method is to go much more extreme and this method does not work well on scale models because it starts to introduce some external rigging. You see I have this line that runs from my wingtip all the way back to the tail. So the method that I'm using here is what's called a pop-off wing and on lightweight models this is pretty much the only way to get your airplane back reliably. This is an FAC Embryo model, the uh, Max Out 9, and this is pretty much the most effective and simplest to rig uh, method for, for retrieving your airplane. So when the fuse burns through, it cuts through this crossed over rubber band. And so with that rubber band falling away, now the wing is no longer attached. And what will happen is that the airplane will end up in this configuration and the wing will spin about its spanwise axis. What that produces is an extremely fast descent. And by extremely fast, I mean quickly enough to get your airplane back down on the field, not fast enough to damage the airplane. So it's not like going into a terminal dive. This is a controlled descent. 
And this method works very well, not just for models in this size range, but everything up into the, the 30 inch range that is, is lightly loaded. So like P30s, uh, even some of your lighter loaded small Mulvey Hills, some of the small old timers like the Farthing Lightweight and the Hepcat. All of those uh, can use this method uh, and can come down actually on pavement without damage. So that is the preferred method from my perspective. This is uh, my wife's embryo model. Um, I'm messing things up here. Uh, currently the line here is not attached, so let's see if we can get it free. Um, and so same method for uh, hooking up the wing. And at the back, we have a snap swivel that hooks into a plywood reinforcement on the tail, so we get the same principle. What's important to notice here is on both of these, this line is free to come up over the tail. You don't want it secured underneath so that it can come around your tail or you run the risk of damaging your stabilizer. Uh, another method that I have used is to actually lap the line around the fuselage here. Very important that you have a platform back here that's wider than the fuselage if you do that so that the line can't come back and take your stab off with it, uh, assuming you have a, an arrangement like this where if you push the stab back the rubber band will come free. Uh, freeing your wing, separating the uh, tail surfaces and everything, and you get back the fuselage. I know this from experience because I had that happen and uh, I watched the wing and stab continue to thermal out of sight and I got back a pretty badly damaged fuselage. Uh, the other important component is this snap swivel because the wing is going to be spinning and it's going to be spinning very fast. You want something to prevent this line from becoming twisted up because otherwise once you retrieve the model you will have to replace that line if it even survives because you can't actually twist it up so much that it will break. So we've talked about that strategy. Uh, just one other method I wanted to show off on this uh, half size weight field is you can uh, mount the snupper tube in, in another arrangement here where the, the rubber band comes up forward. Uh, alternatively you could mount the snupper tube in the uh, top of the fuselage and have this rubber band come back over the, uh, the fuse in that arrangement. Now, a new method that I have been trying that has become popular on hand-launched gliders uh, is, is what we have here on the Max Out 10. And I'm still not sure how I feel about it for, uh, for this particular um, configuration, but it does bring the model down very, very quickly. And it also avoids the disadvantage we have with these traditional pop-off wings of having a line running back here, which if the airplane gets into a tree, that line will entangle and you will damage the airplane getting it down. So this method gets around that by having things, less stuff hanging around. And what we do is we have these crisscross rubber bands, but only this one that comes forward actually touches the fuse. So when it separates, it comes back like so, and the wing, comes free like that. So we have now tilted the wing forward. Now that of course is going to cause the airplane to try to descend inverted and it will tend to tumble um, quite strongly as, as it goes. So that brings the airplane down very very quickly, um, almost too quickly. Uh, so like I said I, I don't know how I feel about that one quite yet but it does work very well and it keeps you from getting snagged in trees uh, as easily if you have an out landing. Last thing I want to point out is some timer methods. So far all we've talked about are uh, fuse timers. This is a traditional pop-up tail uh, setup like what we showed on the scale model except this is using a clockwork timer. Uh, this one's based off one of the so-called Tommy toys, uh, as, they're colloquial, as they're commonly known. Um, and the way this works is I have a release pin, and the clock starts ticking away. 
uh, and you can see that this arm slowly is, is working its way around to this mousetrap mechanism and right about now we're gonna let go like so and now the tail is tilted up we'll go ahead and pin that um, so that method allows you to get away from a burning fuse uh, biggest advantage to this type of a setup is is quicker setup time uh, you don't have to be fighting with something that's on fire. Uh, for those of you that fly on dry fields, that would be a much more preferable method. However, there's an even lighter method. If we we'll come over here, this method is great for small scale models, and this is what's called a viscous fluid timer. The way the viscous fluid timer works on our on our airplanes is we have. Um, we have this little viscous damper, and as you can see, it slowly works its way around when this rubber band is placed on it. Uh, what you would really want to use here is a spring. This is a uh, trimming setup for this particular model. Um, as you can see, the arm is coming around fairly quickly. You want it traditionally, uh, you want it to go about half the speed. So once it gets around here, it's going to release that line, like so and our stab pops up. This is a, a very small travel as you can see, but for this particular uh, model this works very well. The advantage of this is this timer only weighs about uh, right around one gram. So your total added weight for your entire mechanism is maybe one and a half grams. So you're almost as light as a, a fuse based setup. Uh, but you don't have anything on fire, you have a quick turnaround, don't have to replace anything on the model between flights, no rubber bands or what have you. The airplane is ready to go when you get it back. Uh, there are also some electronic dethermalizer methods out there. Some of those actually burn the rubber band off. Uh, others use a, a micro servo and so on. So lots of options for how to actuate your retrieval system. So. Hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please address them in the comments section below. Thank you.